It's currently 5:30 a.m. Oh, we yeah. just got back from day three of the wedding of the eternity. I think I don't think there's ever been a wedding like this ever. So the vibe of being at the wedding was that you're just walking around. And Tiger Shroff is walking by you. KL Rahul is walking Insane. by you. Insane. Seeing Salman Khan waiting for a car at gate 19, I'm just like, what the f is going on? Holy shit, I got a Dutch guy serving me Italian pasta. Never in my wildest dreams did I think Indians would have a wedding where the servers are Europeans. Not even white people, like Europeans. <laughs> oh, that's so hype. John Cena in a barat is like uh, a bucket list thing. Look at that, he's doing the Yo, you can see. So some more context on the food was that there was a pan shop, but it was run by an actual Banarasi pan shop owner who has flown in from Banaras. In any cuisine you can think of, yeah. it was probably the best restaurant serving that cuisine, but set up within that buffet. I also want to talk a little bit about the Amani family here. Yeah. Because if you're the host, you're setting the vibe for the event. Dude, Sunday, I didn't want to meet them because I've heard the line was like so long and I was like, these poor guys. And I heard they're saying hi to every single person. And then the pie seems so sweet. So does Radhika Merchant, who has become a social media icon now. I had a conversation with Radhika's dad asking him mm -hmm. how it is. He was just enjoying it. I got to know that they watched the shows. Really? There was a ring of security guards around the family. Somehow, Anand Bhai saw me walking around and he called out to me, bro. He introduced me to his father who is literally the biggest business inspiration yeah. for anyone who takes up a, a business career in India. That's truly the beginning of India getting looked at differently. This is a hallmark event in the shift of perception. I've never recorded a podcast at 5.36 a.m. Uh, it's currently 8 a.m. as I'm recording this intro. Uh, we shot this podcast right after the day three of the celebrations of the Anand Radhika wedding. Uh, you guys have heard about it. You guys have seen visuals on the news. You guys have seen countless short videos. This is the most raw and most real account of the wedding. Done in English for our overseas audience especially. But for anyone in the world that understands English and wants to know about the greatest event, the greatest party that independent India has thrown and seen. It's a very important moment from a geopolitical perspective. And you'll know why once you watch this special episode with one of my favorite stand-up comics in the world, Akash Singh. It's his debut in TRS. Um, here we go, baby. Let's go. I'm super excited to be hosting Akash Singh on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm tired. This is, I'm tired. <laughs> so context is that it's currently 5.30 a.m. We just got back from day three of the wedding. Of the f eternity, I think. I don't think there's <laughs> ever been a wedding like this ever. <laughs> and I think this is the first podcast about the wedding. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to release. Hopefully. Should be. In the next two days. Yeah. Can I tell you something? This is truly, I felt like this is maybe the biggest I made it moment in my life. Getting invited <laughs> to this wedding is insane. For an NRI kid, I, it's insane to me. I'm, I can't get over it. I told my wife and she was like, what? no, no, you didn't. You didn't, we didn't get invited to the Ambani wedding. You're a liar. There's no way we got invited. This is insane. Bro, the main reason I am recording this podcast is because I'm deeply stimulated right now. Yeah. I have so much to say about everything that we've yeah, seen yeah, in the yeah. last three days. I'm still processing. The best way to do that is always through photos okay. and yes. organic of reactions. Course. Of course. Um, this is one of those moments where I've not even told our boys, our crew about yeah. the details. Yeah. And we're just going to open up. Oh, to okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. Okay. So we're Ooh. telling you guys too. Okay. So we're going to pick up some viral okay. videos okay. and uh, share <laughs> yeah. uh, our experience. And I wish I could have done, hey, Akash Singh, welcome to yeah, DRS Yeah, no, don't worry time. about that. You know how crazy this wedding was? I would go home every night and still watch videos on Instagram <laughs> of the wedding I was just at. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's crazy. Okay. First, this guy. This was one of the highlights of my life, honestly. <laughs> oh, God, I love it so much. Look at that. Look at that. The guy in blue. Coming through, dude. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that's so hype. <laughs> oh, my God. John Cena in a Bharat is like uh, a bucket list thing. Look at that. He's doing the yeah, you can see. Yeah, let's go. See. 
<laughs> Every Indian person knows who John Cena is. I didn't know that. He's that famous in our yeah. country. Oh, uh, that's I mean that's so cool. John Cena in a Bharat is so cool. Yeah. There's another one. Bro, people lost their shit. I lost my shit when I saw Dude, him. Dude, how do they find a Sherwani to fit him? That's what I've been wondering this whole time. They just took a f- blanket. <laughs> Did you end up meeting him? I didn't get to meet him. No, I didn't get to meet many of the people. I was just looking at them. But I didn't actually even see him. Yeah. I missed him somehow. Bro, I went up to him because he was just standing like a regular guy amongst a lot of Indian people. Yeah. And everyone was hesitating to go up to him. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, yeah. I don't hesitate. So I went up to him and I said, hey, bro, you've made my childhood. <laughs> and I had two long conversations with him where I just told him how much he's helped a whole generation of really? Indians. Yeah, he's huge in our country. You know, it was the coolest thing is when he posted about Shah Rukh Khan and said, you've impacted me so much. And I'm dying to know how. I'm dying to know. Because Shah Rukh Khan is my, yeah. I mean, everything for NRIs. We saw Shah Rukh Khan at the wedding. I saw him from a distance. I would have, dude, I don't think I, I might have cried if I met him. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to approach him. <laughs> when Shah Rukh Khan's walking around, there's an aura that's 30 feet tall yeah, and yeah. 30 feet wide around yeah. him. Everyone notices that yeah. it's Shah Rukh Khan. Dude, NRIs, he is, I think he is our connection to India. Really? So like he means so much to me. Yeah. I met Audien and I didn't want to be like, Audien, I respect because the Audien's a sweet kid and I don't want to, I don't want him to think I only care about him because his dad. I met him, he's a really nice kid, but like, I didn't even want to approach Shadu because I would have embarrassed my wife with how I would have acted. <laughs> I would, she would have been like, dude, chill. Um, about John Cena a little bit. Uh, in America, what are people saying about him being at the wedding? It was, John Cena is an international superstar to us, so it makes sense, I think, he would be in India at this wedding. Like, it doesn't even seem crazy in that sense because he is so international. But I do think it's, again, it's good. Like, it just it proves India is becoming China where it's like, you need to be successful there if you want to be successful. Mm. You know what I mean? I also think for uh, a lot of our international audiences, yeah, you might have to explain what a Bharat is. Oh, dude, yeah, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot you have international fans. Uh, the Bharat is when the when you get married. My understanding is the idea is it's like a king is coming to meet the queen. Mm. So the king side, the groom side, all of your friends and family are surrounding you, dancing, celebrating, going to meet the queen. So it's it's a big, you could do it in 15 minutes, but you don't because you're dancing. So usually it takes like an hour. Your whole family and friends are dancing, great music. Maybe the, you're just with, with the, the doll. That's it. That's yeah. the music in most barats. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, this one took like eight hours, but uh, it's, just the, it's just the most hype event in the world. Let's speak about the eight hours. Yeah. Let's actually pause the screen work and talk about what we saw yeah. in the eight hours. That was insane. That was the coolest part of the whole wedding to me. Bro. Was that your favorite part of the wedding? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's where I met you as well. And yeah, you were just yeah. like vibing yeah. and dancing. But I saw you towards the end yes. of like those eight hours. Yeah. It, it was it was like three or four hours. Yeah. But basically they had a long road built out mm-hmm. and stations along that road. And on each of the stations was one music superstar. Yeah. Some music superstars from India and some international ones. Yeah. They had Kenan. They had uh, Rema, you know. Yeah. Calm down. Oh, yeah. Calm, calm down. down. Calm down was crazy. I couldn't <laughs> believe Calm Down was there. <laughs> I didn't know his name. I just knew Calm Down. My wife said it well. She said, uh, if you hear a song and you, it's not, it's, it's not the radio. It's not a cover band. It's the artist singing that song throughout the entire wedding. If you heard an Adam on song, it was Adam on singing. It wasn't somebody covering Adam on. Yeah. I couldn't believe the amount of people they had performing was crazy. Yeah. I don't remember a single moment at the wedding. And this is over the three days where someone wasn't performing or there wasn't some kind of show happening and all of it was like kind of also showcasing Indian culture in like many yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even even with Kenan and like yeah. Rema, these people are huge in India. So it was like with that Indian lens. I was it. amazed how many people like Kenan. Because I didn't <laughs> know he was, I knew some people knew him in America, but I didn't know he was that big in India. People yeah. were going crazy. Yeah. I, mean, I did not know. Waving Flag, his yeah, like yeah. biggest song was like yeah. massive here. But Coming back to the Bharat, those those stations, I'll never get over that because in a normal Bharat, uh, in any wedding, you basically just walk with the whole crew yeah. and you go forward. Just the doll, that's it. Yeah. But here, the crew was stopping at every station, having a mini concert. Yeah. Uh, the the artist was vibing and everyone in the Bharat was also going crazy. And when we're talking about the Bharat, these were the superstars of that. So India. that's the crazy thing to me. I think it's even crazier to me to see those people than Hollywood superstars. Because Bollywood just seems so far off to me yeah. as a kid in America. Um, You guys have Tom Brady. We have MS Dhoni. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. The, he's the equivalent of Tom Brady. I couldn't, cricket. dude. W- walking in the Bharat was, and I have to honestly, I want to give a shout out to Karan Johar. I thought <laughs> it was so sweet. So many people asked for this guy. I want to talk about this on Flagrant, and it's hard to explain to the international audience if you don't know Bollywood how much he means. Well, the best way I was thinking, how would I explain this to the guys on Flagrant? So, women in America f- love Titanic, right? And the director of that is James Cameron. If James Cameron made six movies like Titanic, that's Karan Johar. Mm. So, we're walking through the Bharat, and I want to shout him out. My wife is chasing him down to get a selfie. And she's not like that. She's chasing him. And I saw him, every single person that asked for a selfie, he gave them energy. He gave them genuine warmth. He took a picture with them. Uh, somebody else, Varun Dhawan, I think is his name, the Humpty, Humpty Chatham, yeah. he yeah. did the same thing for my wife also. And then I, I thanked him and he was really cool about it. He's like, don't worry, man, I have a wife too. Put his arm around me. Yeah. But those who, but God and I saw it specifically so many people asking for selfies and just, yeah, every time. Bro, these were like some of the most famous people that India's ever seen. MS Dhoni, Karan Johar, yeah. uh, Varun Dhawan, Ranveer Singh, Ranbir Kapoor, all dude, these guys. I'm seeing Salman Khan waiting for a car at gate 19. I'm just like, what the? <laughs> is going on dude <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> what's going on by himself chilling yeah the context i also want to give people here is that all these people were very approachable at the wedding because everyone was actually partying yeah everyone was in a good zone and they were okay with like giving yeah. out selfies and all that yeah i was afraid to ask but like salman in just in tea just intimidates me as a guy he's just got too many muscles but uh that was crazy just seeing him just alone. And if you wanted to, yeah, if you want to go up to him, you could 1000% get a picture with him. It was crazy. I have a tiny Salman story from this wedding. So yeah, all of us like 90s brown kids, we've yeah. seen a phase of Salman Khan because of which a lot of us love him forever. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was an after party uh, yeah. area <laughs> where yeah. we were in the last two days. On the first day in the after party area, that's where I met Salman Khan. Oh my God. But went up to him. Uh, it took some time to break the ice, but I just told him, hey man, thank you for your 90s phase especially. Yeah, yeah. These guys enjoy it. If yeah. you, Because I, I feel like people who are that famous can pick up on energy and they can pick up on yeah. uh, what your vibe is towards yeah. them. Uh, but I've never seen a social scenario where people this famous were also this approachable. Dude, I can't believe I can't. I'm blanking on her last name. Sanakshi Sinha. Yeah. My wife asked her her for a selfie as well. <laughs> just we saw her waiting for a car. She's there. So my wife was like, ah, she didn't like chase her down. She's like, I like her. I'm a fan. Yeah. She goes to Sanakshi, asked for a selfie. And, and Sanakshi's like, oh, look at that. We're twins. <laughs> like, talk. it was just so cool to do that. You know what I mean? Like, to make, to compliment my wife. I just thought that was really, uh, yeah, it was, everybody was so cool. Yeah. I was like so, yeah, heart warmed by the whole thing. Yeah. I also want to talk a little bit about the Ambani family here. Yeah. Because if you're the host, you're setting the vibe for the event. They were trying to meet as many guests as is possible. Yeah. They were making it a point to spend time with each person. Dude, there. Sunday, I didn't want to meet them because I've, I've heard the line was like so long. And I was like, these poor guys. And I heard they're saying hi to every single person, which is crazy. And it's not even just a hi. Uh, they stayed with you for a bit spoke to you, ensured that you've seen different things at uh, the wedding on on that particular day. Uh, they, they actually gave you the presents. I don't know how they did it, but they kind of set the tone for the wedding. And there was a very, I mean, at, at Indian weddings, you always look forward to the atmosphere in the air as well. Yeah. Like the vibe in the air, you can yeah, kind yeah. of feel it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not just saying this, but even though it was an event full of famous people, you could feel a lot of positive energy like in the air and everyone was, was having awesome. fun. Yeah, India, I think that's, honestly, I, I do think that's Indian weddings, but I remember my wedding. You don't really get to enjoy it because you have to say hi to everybody. And the wedding is about you, but you don't get to enjoy it because you're busy doing greeting. I had 200 people at my wedding. You know what I mean? They had 9,000 people on Friday. <laughs> so saying hi to 9,000 people, it's just like I don't even understand. I, like the math, I don't even get. I was exhausted and I felt like I didn't get to really experience my wedding with 200 people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Crazy, dude. I'm much respect. I didn't even know. I know of the Ambani family. I, I'm actually curious to know how they built the wealth, what happened. Like, I, I want to research it, but uh, I was very impressed by the whole thing. Do you want a quick one-on-one? Yes, like, please. Right? But make, also, it for, make it for, like, stupid people because I'm not smart. Yeah, so. Uh, so, I mean, one of the films that's come out of the Hindi film industry, which is kind of loosely based on the person who began the Ambani empire, his name was Dhirubhai Ambani ji. Yeah, yeah. And he's considered one of the most iconic business 
professionals yeah. in Indian history. Yeah. Like he single-handedly changed India. Yeah. Uh he handed it over to his sons uh Mukesh bhai and Anil bhai. When did that happen? 2002 okay. to 2003. Okay. Uh they took it further. Uh Mukesh bhai took it to a whole other level with Jio. He basically made the internet like very affordable for everyone. Okay. Uh and at this stage so in with indian youtubers yeah. we have a pre geo phase and a post geo phase uh, like it he made that much of a difference to the indian internet yeah dude i think the perception of india sorry to interrupt but i think no, the no, perception ahead. of india from post there's going to be pre geo post geo there's like kind of pre ambani wedding post ambani wedding really? i might be t- uh, blowing it up too much cuz it's 5 am we just left but that's truly i how i feel i'm like yo there's going to be how we're perceived pre ambani wedding and now the ambani's People didn't know them, now they know them. People mm. internationally, now they know them. And then I don't know, I just think this is the beginning of India getting looked at differently. Yeah. Uh do you know who Palki Sharma is? No clue. So Palki Sharma is a very iconic news anchor who's come out of India and she mainly speaks about geopolitics. So she has a huge right. international audience as well. She was on the show a month ago and she said that the biggest challenge that India is facing geopolitically is not the hard power which is the infrastructure yeah, um, yeah. you know uh, the military growth all that yeah. the biggest challenge is the soft power which yeah. is india's image on the world stage yeah pre yeah. ambani wedding yeah. post ambani yeah. wedding i mean i think hard i think infrastructure that's a thing but that's a problem but yeah soft power the dude i grew up in america and it's crazy i'm 40 now so i grew up in the 80s when it was like people didn't even know what india was people used to call me an african when i was in elementary school. Seriously? Then yeah, then there was like a you guys are poor. It is, and it felt like, you know, when i would come here it felt like a different india. The first time i came was i didn't come till i was 15, but that was 99. And now the perception, you can just feel the whole shift. It's not 180 yet. We still got we definitely still got a ways to go. That you can feel it shifting and i you could i'm not even lying or exaggerating just cuz they invited me. This is a hallmark event in the shift of perception. I don't know if it's the beginning, maybe I'm overstating that, but it definitely is a thing. This is a a massive point in that transformation as it's happening. Uh do people know about the Ambani family now? Now, uh, two months ago they did not. Now they do. Because Rihanna was flown down. Rihanna was the main thing. And then honestly when she mispronounced the names, but but I think Rihanna getting Rihanna out of retirement, <laughs> people were like what the f- is going on? I'm not even people were like what the f- this thing <laughs> that there was the fashion show also i think that was a that was a thing but not like this getting rihanna people were like rihanna's a billionaire how much did you have to pay her american papers are saying 10 million i don't know if that's true but uh i think it's honestly to get rihanna, to get a billionaire to say i'll come perform it's probably an insane number but that people were like dude what's going on here they also got bebo bebo was crazy Did I the, I heard there was a bigger act that had to back out last second that was supposed to come this weekend but like yeah that's then once I got Bieber it was like oh this is a thing thing you know what I mean well, okay based on the fact that you are an uh overseas citizen of India yeah when you were at this wedding can you talk a little bit about what you noticed visually just for context so I'm a friend of yours in America And I want to ask you bro how did the wedding look what yeah, would you say I, I've been trying to think how am I going to tell this to the flavor <laughs> boys so I think it felt like it wasn't a wedding it felt like they took a convention center and built a city within that convention center not a big city but a a f- city and this is only for Indians or people who know Bollywood every part of this city looked like a Sanjay Leela Bansali set it was gorgeous it looked like old beautiful india that you see in the movies and there's four different floors and every floor serves a unique purpose that is beyond just a wedding probably some of the craziest decor that i've seen it and was. all of it was centered around indian culture in like some way yeah of course uh, i think uh, one piece of context i want to give international audiences is kind of they built out a mini universal studios of sorts within yeah yeah that's yeah that's a fair yeah, comparison yeah absolutely yeah but all indian sets Yeah. Everything was pure Indian. There was no we're not trying to cater to you. We and this is dude as a comic, this is a weird this I'm going somewhere with no, this. No, no, go go ahead. As a comic, I would perform for Indian uncles and aunties in America. 
And when the first couple times I did it, I tried to like do jokes about Shah Rukh Khan or whatever to prove to them that I'm like you, I'm from India, I'm Indian, I know a little bit about the culture. And that would always bomb. And I realized they would look at me and be like, why are you trying to be like us? You're not like us, just be you. So then I started going up there and I said, I'm just going to do my jokes. Maybe I'll cuss a little bit less, but everything else is going to be me and I'm going to make you come to me. That's what they did at this wedding. We're not Americanizing ourselves for you. We might have Bieber and Drake, I guess, but also they're so global that's not even American. This is an Indian wedding and we are bringing you to an Indian wedding. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not bringing an Indian wedding to America. Okay, I hope that I'm allowed to say this on I think I'm allowed to say this on a podcast. Yeah. On day 2 of the wedding, uh they released a movie, a 10 minute movie within the wedding for the wedding guests. Yeah, yeah. Directed by Atli, it was an animated film and a voice over was done by Amitabh Bachchan. Wow. A, a micro movie for the wedding as one of the events. I did we were 2 hours late that day. Yeah. Yeah. And we missed that. Yeah. God. But uh, that was the that scale. that annoyed me a little bit that it like if you're having at least run on Indian standard time I'm two <laughs> hours late that should be very normal that's one little beef I have with the Ambani's is don't be on time you know what I mean like you can just be two hours late that's what we do yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean that's yeah. a little annoying yeah. don't be on time please yeah. but there was a lot to do so I've not slept for the last two days because I was yeah. extremely stimulated. yesterday yeah uh the day before it yeah. was just a lot to take in it was a lot of cool people to meet yeah uh, i've never seen yeah that level of fame be that chilled out honestly also i i thought cuz hollywood st- people i don't look as good in real life as i do on camera if i'm filming something so i thought the bollywood stars would look worse in real life no every one of them gorgeous siddharth malhotra is the most handsome human being i've ever met in my life <laughs> So I he was next to Kiara and I was staring at him the whole time I swear I was like this guy is so hot it's crazy yeah. I don't even know what's happening the Kiara is stunning as well I didn't notice <laughs> respectfully I feel like he appreciates that I was looking at my wife Sid god damn dude yeah Kiara better watch out for me so the vibe of being at the wedding was that you're just walking around and Tiger Shroff is walking by you insane you know KL Rahul is walking insane. by you insane like the top cricketers the top actors the top politicians are just kind of uh, exploring that mini world that was built out at the convention center dude here's another anecdote i'm sitting at the second day's function saturday my wife and i are sitting at a table it's just us because we were late we didn't get to go to the ashirvad so we're just waiting at dinner and then this really sweet late girl comes up to us she's probably in her 20s and she says uh, is anybody sitting here is it okay if my mom and i sit here we said absolutely sit down we start talking very friendly 20 minutes into the conversation What do you do it comes up? I say I'm a comedian and then I ask what do you do and she goes, "Oh, we own sports teams." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And then they owned, I don't know if they want me to say, but they owned professional franchises in America that are very valuable. And it was just like, "Oh, I'm just sitting talking to this person for 20 minutes. I have no clue. This is just a person." An NBA team owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An NBA team. Two NBA and NBA and a WNBA. Uh, more context on this kind of vibe. was that anyone you spoke to there yeah was somebody in the real world especially yeah. in india like everyone you met was probably you, you know what an ips officer is an ias yeah, officer yeah dude my dad was supposed to be a pcs officer yeah. and then he had to move to america uh, really, like bureau- really ruined his life <laughs> <laughs> like a, a top bureaucrat yeah there was just top bu- bureaucrats everywhere there were indian celebrities everywhere there was extremely iconic people just walking around enjoying indian food yeah Uh, we got to talk about food as well. We'll we'll get yeah, to yeah. that. I think Akhi's pulled up something. Yeah, all <laughs> all these people. So Kim Kardashian, yeah. Mamta Banerjee, who's an iconic Indian politician. Yeah, Rajni Kant, who's the most iconic Tamil film superstar, and myself yeah. and you, <laughs> so all crazy. of us. It's so crazy, bro. It this like. Is this something you visualized for your own life? <laughs> no, dude, I really this is the and I'm I'm more buzzing because it's 5 a.m. and I've got coffee and but like uh this was truly like a dream and I really can't explain I I always say is I'd rather be if God said you can only choose one Hollywood or Bollywood I'd say give me Bollywood I don't give a f- about Hollywood. <laughs> so being with them Bro. I mean just like you're just watching Ranveer at the, in the barat just like hyping everybody up I said so, dude I lost my mind when I saw Hardik Pandya I legitimately screamed his name like a <laughs> teenage girl. I was like, "Hardik Pandya!" And I don't even know. He didn't even notice. Thank God, it was so embarrassing. But it was like insane, dude. It was insane. 
look at all these people and this is what i mean man what a spectacle this is not something that even indians visualized ever yeah bro and these are these are the top people from their own industries there's honey singh there's ap dono ranbir kapoor ranbir singh uh alia bhat all i i can't even like get through with the list but yeah this is what it looked like this is what it felt like lots of people yeah lots of people yeah Anand Bhai seems like such a sweet kid. I'm 40, so I start talking about people like that. Yeah. But he really, you know, what I love. There was a moment he walked by again. I, I was like, I don't want. To, he's greeting everybody. I want to talk to him. But somebody was trying to pull him somewhere, and he was like, No, no, we need Radhika, Radhika, Radhika. And he like called out to his wife, and I was like, Oh, he didn't even want to go. That's so sweet, dude. I really like. He seems like a sweet kid. He really does. So I went to the school, which was founded by the Ambani family, and Anand Bhai was uh, my junior in school, and he's dealt with. a lot of health problems throughout his life. Oh shit, yeah, I didn't stuff know that. that he couldn't help and I don't know if this is public knowledge but I believe he's had some lung trouble oh, wow. uh, and some more issues but it's been this way for a long time. Uh I remember when we were kids even back then uh he was a really kind guy. Yeah, he's, that was his yeah. reputation within school as well. Uh I think that people have a certain perception about him. anyone who attended the wedding and actually interacted with him you get to know how chill he is how kind he is uh the context on him now publicly is that uh he's founded vantara so he's rescued animals since the time he was a kid at this point uh through vantara i think they're rescuing like uh wild animals mm. you know in in like yeah, the yeah, small yeah. circuses abroad yeah. uh, etc so they've basically gone all over the globe that's so sweet dude. yeah that's that's who he is as a guy but you need to meet him to understand his energy otherwise you're going to have perceptions about him uh and i hope to do a podcast with him at some point so that yeah. people get to like know the guy but this is genuinely one of the kindest bhaiyon ka bhai's there is yeah yeah uh, explain what a bhaiyon ka bhai is Bro- uh, the brother's brother a brother of a brother yeah. Yeah. yeah and you see that with all his bros taking care of him as well yeah so it was cool we got to meet a lot of his childhood friends again i was intimidated to talk to him but like all of them and I, I was shocked at how not snobby they were also because yeah. I expect you grow up with kids like that you got money everybody super down to earth but they all said this then he's just the sweetest guy every one of them was like he's just such mm-hmm. a kind they said kind soul multiple times yeah it's it's all about a conversation like i feel again the family was talking to everyone at the wedding so i didn't know if i could go and approach them because of how hounded they were yeah same okay i was just like walking around them so there was a ring of security guards around the family yeah uh and that ring was pretty intimidating but yeah. uh somehow anand bhai saw me walking around and he called out to me bro uh and i went inside and he introduced me to his father who is literally the biggest business inspiration yeah. for anyone who takes up a, a business career Dude, this is a cool moment too and this also let me know how powerful they were this sports owner that was with me we made friends this I guess again just the sweetest person they went to um meet mukesh bhai and or bhai i guess for me and uh <laughs> they, like they were intimidated this person is worth tens of billions of dollars easily intimidated talking to mukesh bhai but then they approached him he said hi what's up they started walking away and then he pulled them back in to take a picture with his family mm. and i was like oh that's so sweet to like cuz they were like kind of intimidated they're just walking away and they literally said to me they're like i mean i said hi i don't know why how that went i don't know what else i said i was so nervous and then as they're finishing the sentence mukesh bhai comes grabs them and then pulls them in and then it was just like they seem like a very you wouldn't think billionaires would be like that let's just say that yeah bro and he's probably the most iconic billionaire that india has ever seen that's the business context when you grow up in a, this yeah. country i think everyone knows mukesh ambani yeah, in course. the same way that everyone knows john cena but in a different i didn't light. can i be honest with you this is going to sound no, that's fine. i didn't even know there were other indian billionaires like that <laughs> yeah. I'm, i'm guessing there's there's 1.4 billion people so you probably got like 5 but yeah. it's uh, you know i think the two most iconic ones are ratan tata and mukesh oh, ambani yeah that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. these yeah. are the two most iconic uh, yeah. billionaires that india has ever seen yeah and both of them have changed uh, the the country in their own way there's an urban legend about mukesh ambani again i don't this is what we hear in like business circles i think he's something like 65 he's between 65 and 70 years old mm-hmm. uh and he's still working for like 16 to 17 hours really? every day yeah so my first thought when i was meeting him was that holy shit so so busy 
mm-hmm. but he's still giving me patience time and attention and i just all all i could do was convey my gratitude for yeah. all the inspiration we've got as like business owners yeah uh, and that's what any business owner would do if you were face to face with mukesh ambani yeah so to be introduced to him and he they were so sweet bro like yeah. they, not for a minute i saw you talking to them and i was uh, i wanted to go approach but i was like i'm not gonna because of the ring <laughs> no i just felt like this person is like you you're just intimidated again and i felt better about being intimidated when i see someone worth tens of billions of dollars being intimidated but i i saw you talking to them and i was like i let them be bro so, i was i was intimidated even even nah, though you looked wild comfortable it annoyed me actually i yeah. was really f- hated how comfortable <laughs> you looked laughing and stuff it was annoying but my god like even even to so what's happening at the wedding is wherever the amani family was the rest of the wedding's eyes were like pointed towards them of course and they were aware of this and they was that they were being nice to everyone despite you yeah. know that level of attention and i don't know how they kept the energy levels up over the 3 days but somebody said that to me somebody said one of the childhood friends said uh you're the ambani's don't sleep you don't understand cuz they said they were up to like 5 a.m. the night before or something and i was like what yeah. i'm exhausted i'm ready to go it was like 11 p.m. and then they go no 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 you don't understand these people don't sleep yeah and uh, i'm assuming that's they're not they don't look like party animals they yeah. look like this shit is work <sighs> So I want to talk a little bit about the food experience, okay? So it begins with like starters that are like so, yeah. and the starters are also epic. And on the uh, you know the the tag for the starters, they've written about the ingredients, some of which were sourced from South America, some yeah, of which yeah, were sourced yeah. from Japan. Yeah, uh, you and you could feel the freshness in the food. Yeah, but what really blew me away was the actual dinners. Yeah. So on the it it was one floor above the yeah uh, main wedding area. Uh, there was a floor full of food and places sure. to sit and eat you you enter and you see a long line like a really long line probably like 200 meters or 300 meters long of of just dessert counters with yeah. different desserts yeah it was crazy um fresh then, waffles fresh crepes uh there was a like a flower arrangement where it was like flower cupcakes and flower petal, petals that were edible I missed a lot of it because so we got so jet lagged we had to leave early on Friday. Mm-hmm. Food got served at like eleven. We left at like ten thirty. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, one during during the barat there was like the tiramisu with caviar that I really wanted to eat. <laughs> but like I'm not leaving the I don't want to leave the barat line. There's Bollywood stars right here. I'm not leaving that fucking line. So I missed so many of the food stands. I was so irritated because so much of the good food I didn't get to eat. The the jot I did have though that was fire. So this is also cool. You're walking through again if you know Bollywood at all. This looks like a Sanjay Leela Bansali set. This is like when he depicts 1940s India, this beautiful clean thing. That's what one of the floors look like and it's just different food stands all throughout and like shops where they're selling like they were giving away bangles. I heard they were giving away uh like designer sunglasses yeah. like Versace sunglasses there, there were shops that. shops built into the wedding setting and not but not all of them charged some of them just gave you the shit it was yeah. crazy did any of them charge uh there was some there was like a jewelry one obviously they're not going to give away you know diamond necklaces and stuff they're selling oh, maybe that, they but, will yeah, maybe yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe this is what is called a uh, bhandara in indian culture mm-hmm. which is uh, like a free of cost dinner or lunch for a huge number of people like longer yeah, yeah yeah my wife is sick so yeah yeah uh it's exact same concept okay. uh pre pre wedding uh and there was also pretty much a bhandara that went on inside yeah, over 3 yeah. days yeah 1000% um, but also bhandara of clothes yeah and sunglasses and like uh, there was a shop uh, full of banarasi sarees the the oh, are those being given away i think so bro damn it um <laughs> damn it but you it was it was so big in terms of size that it took time to even go to each shop. yeah we didn't go, like, we didn't go to each shop there's no way you could humanly experience the whole wedding there was that much to do yeah um yeah. so some more context on the food was that uh, there was a pan shop but it was run by an actual banarasi pan shop owner who was flown in from banaras uh, there was a yeah. lassi shop yeah. where the owner was flown in from somewhere uh, yeah. else it was like they kind of got uh entire restaurants and place them within, within the wedding yeah uh, and that's also what went on the buffet upstairs i think there was every every cuisine you can think of but when it comes to indian food it was food from dumpuk which is like considered one of the best indian chains in the world then uh, yeah, yeah the the italian place i'll never yeah. forget that food yeah. I, i don't remember the name and i'm from new york and i've well not from i live in new york now and i'll judge italian food so harshly now cuz i grew up in texas italian food there i realized sucks 
that was, and my wife is from Philadelphia, the great Italian food. Both of us were like, this is crazy. This is yeah. crazy. We had, they, we just had them build, build, bring us a whole pie, a whole margarita pizza <sighs> just for us. It was so good. Uh, and there was a Japanese stall, a French stall, uh, an Asian stall. There was yeah. like, and any cuisine you can think of, yeah, it was probably the best restaurant serving that cuisine, but set up within that buffet. Yeah, a uh, very intense experience for food lovers. So I think food is best enjoyed when you're sharing it. Mm -hmm. And we, I was late on day two, so I ended up I chilling know. with one of my co-founders, Harshil, and we just went to every stall and we ensured that we didn't eat too much because we wanted to try like yeah, everything. yeah, yeah, uh, and we still couldn't try everything. Yeah, because you no, just got full after a point. Yeah. Oh yeah, this was so sweet, dude. Anand on the pie seems so sweet. Yeah. It really does. So does Radhika, Radhika Mojit, yeah, who's she become seems... a social media icon now. Oh yeah, I love that. And she and she looked beautiful, honestly. Yeah. And I remember there's a video I saw on Instagram the next day of just like her laughing and dancing with Anand Pai. And it's just like I it's really cool that you can because the perception we have, at least in America, of really powerful families is it's like very unhappy and empty. And I didn't get that perception here, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah. And inspiring. Uh, that to me is more inspiring than the wealth. If you don't have this, it ain't worth it. And I felt like they had real love, and I was like, "That's awesome." Yeah. I also interacted with uh, Radhika's family. Yeah, I'm like a super extroverted person. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but like, I I flutter around. Yeah, like I I never stick with like one yeah. group because I love human beings. Yeah, the price I pay for that is I get overstimulated. But I had a conversation with Radhika's dad, asking him mm -hmm. how it is. Uh, he was just enjoying it. Yeah. I felt like I'm talking to myself from the future, <laughs> Mr. Brain Merchant. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he gave me some inputs on the show and everything. So I was very validated. Really? Yeah, I got to know that they watched the show. So. Inputs like criticisms or good things? He actually criticized the show a little <clears throat> bit in a very like uh, constructive way. Oh. So I appreciate it. Okay. But uh, very real, very real people. Yeah. Radhika herself was so real. Uh, I think that that's the thing with uh, events of this scale get spoken about this much, there's that many perceptions that are built around the people within those events. But I, I just wish people got to experience those human beings, you know, to, yeah. to know the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But they didn't get invited. <laughs> we did, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? How, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about I the, told, the I, fact that, you know, you one was invited? Like, I, I can't explain, it, it's just, it, it, to me, so many other people didn't get invites that I thought were up here. And I'm not saying I'm up there, but like the fact that I got invited was so fucking cool for an NRI kid to feel validated in India. It's just like, I can't even explain how much that meant to me. I, I can't. It's so awesome. I'm so thankful to Bhavan, even though it annoys me how successful you are at such a young age. <laughs> How's the NRI community perceiving it now? They love it. Like I'm, everybody's in, in awe that I was invited to this wedding. Do they get how Indian culture is being kind of celebrated back home yeah we feel it because we all got made fun of as kids about it and now you still get made fun of and there's still parts of india that are going to get made fun of and that's not an insult it's just a country that's working its way up but the perception is also there's now it's not just that now it's that and the smartest people are coming over and uh getting the h1 visas in america and then you got the ambanis who are super wealthy and the perception is okay it's still like working its way out of whatever britain did to it but it's it's coming you know, there's this quote by Mukesh Bhai, and this is great context for India, for international audiences. So he said that my father, as in Dhirubhai Ambani ji, took 50 years to build his empire. I took 25 years, but the uh, next Dhirubhai Ambani will take about 10 years. Oh, I like that. That's, That's awesome. where India's economic yeah, story yeah, is. Yeah. That's the real economic perspective on India. But these kind of narratives can only be out there because of videos that are speaking about the Amani wedding. We yeah. know that this video is going to get clicks. And that's what the Amani wedding did for our country. It's put us on the world map in so many ways, man. I mean, I, I kind of feel this in general when I come to India. I'm like, oh, maybe we want to, maybe we should spend time here. Maybe we should buy a place here. Maybe we should live here. Maybe we should spend half the year here. This time it really was like, I'm talking to my wife like, uh, I, we might need to figure this out. When we have kids, we might need to be here. Like, we might need to raise our kids in India. Say more, bro. So, I don't want to bash America because America's done so much for my family, done so much for me. I, I'm very grateful to everything that America has done, but if I'm thinking what country is really ascending, and it's where, like, growing up in America, I was never connected to my roots. You, Everybody in America tells me I'm Indian, 
And then I come to India and everybody in India is like, no, you're not, dude. You don't speak the language that well. You don't know much about what's going on. So I'm kind of a man without a home. So I would love to give my kids, if I could raise my kids with economic opportunity and in their home, like I know my soul is from here. Every time I come to India and I'm walking around, that's the one thing about this wedding. I didn't have, I was so tired. I didn't have time to walk. I usually just walk around Mumbai, Bangalore, wherever. And I'm like, oh, this is home. My soul knows it's home. I would love to raise my kids in their 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 spiritual home. You know what I mean? And there's opportunity here that there might not have been in 1968 when my mom moved here. So, or my mom moved to America. So like, yeah, that's a thought. That's a conversation. It's a big move, but it's a conversation that's like, that might, we might need to start having that conversation in the next five, 10 years of like really considering at the very least spending a lot of time here, but maybe just moving all together. Okay. So because you've grown up in America, you obviously know white people yeah. much better than I know white yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I noticed white people being very overwhelmed at this wedding for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what yeah, is yeah. the white person perspective here? It's just a lot of people, man. It's like, you know, it's we're not in America. You don't get New York has a lot of population density. Most of America is not New York. I'm New York and I've been in India. So this wasn't that. But also like seeing this in a wedding. White weddings are small things. I have a joke about this, but a white wedding is like 50 people. This is 9,000 people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like insane how much bigger this is. So to them, it's a whole different. We don't know what the fuck is going on. And like you're walking everywhere. You're tired. It's just a bunch of space to navigate. It, I think they were overwhelmed by the scale of it more than anything. The scale of it. The scale of the the build out, the scale of the food, the, like the amount of stuff there is to do, the people, like the general scale of it, I think just threw everyone off. That's not, that didn't know what to expect. Did you interact with uh, anyone? You yeah, did? I interacted with a couple white people that one was like a banker or something. He really sweet guy, him and his wife. And then, uh, you know, a couple other people, but yeah, mostly just kind of you guys childhood friends of Anand the Pai and then like you know random people and what was the general everybody's like overwhelmed yeah blown away dude just like this is it. crazy this is insane in a good way but like blown away <laughs> truly I didn't see anybody being like no nah, I don't like this this is too much there might have been moments where non-Indians were like, okay, this event is going on long enough. We can keep that moving. Mm. But I, again, I don't think they knew what to expect with an Indian wedding. So, But I didn't see anybody being like, oh, this is gaudy. Or I didn't hear any of that, truly. Yeah. You could be standing at any location in that venue and you could just take in what you'd see around you. Yeah. Uh, but it was a lot, dude. It's hard to take in. It's so much. I st- if you, I've been thinking since the day I got there, how would I describe this to flagrant friends and friends in America? I don't know how because it wasn't a wedding. It was a th- It was an event. It was a convention. It was like Comic Con, but a wedding. Bro, I've not been able to sleep for the last two days. Yeah, because I've not been able to digest it. Honestly. Yeah. Um, and this is all of it. Obviously, meeting Salman Khan and yeah, all yeah, that yeah, is yeah. one aspect. Yeah. But it's way too much stimulation in a great way. For the senses, just being at that wedding. Yeah. Uh, so, and I guess over the next few days, like it's just been a few hours that we've yeah, yeah, got yeah. done with it. But yeah. over the next few days, we'll be able to process it. Yeah. Even then, I'm, it's just so much to take in. It's crazy. It's so, a massive thing. So if I'm Andrew, and yeah. I'm going to ask you, hey, Akash, like, yeah. uh, tell me about the wedding. It was everything to the maximum. Everything that you could possibly think to the max. It was the maximum number of people, the maximum number of food, the maximum number of food options, the maximum number of things going on outside of a wedding, the maximum number of influential people. Everything you think to the max. It was four different halls. Like it was again, dude, it's it's over it was an overwhelming thing. And that's I think what I said earlier was like what I was thinking about last night is it wasn't a wedding. It felt like they took a convention center, built a maybe a small city, and then this you're just visiting the city and there's a wedding happening in the city. Also, highly, highly organized and secure. I was yeah. blown away by the security. I was blown away by all the people who were in charge of managing the event. Yeah, I didn't meet a single crasher, which is crazy. Holy That's crazy. Shit. I was thinking about that too. It's 9,000 people coming and not a single one was a crasher. Wow. And you know, you could just like be standing somewhere, look around and someone would come up to you yeah. and ask you, hey, do you need anything? Yeah. And take you from one point to another. And yeah. the points were very distant because the location was that big. Yeah. But I've never been to 
an event that's this well organized. That's what I took in. Yeah, they had them. They had them on it too. Uh, the people that I could tell there were some people that would like recognize me, but they didn't. They thought it'd be unprofessional to like say something. And I wanted to be like, buddy, I'm not that famous. You could just say something. Like I need this more than you think I do. Just talk to me. No, 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 <laughs> just, no sir. You yeah. are America. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dog. You. I need the ego boost. Just talk to me. You know? <laughs> Oh, you dude. like? Oh, you know when I was like, these guys got money, money. Was when I saw like Europeans working for them. I was like, this is great. What a flex that is! Holy shit! I got a Dutch guy serving me Italian pasta. What a flex, dude! Running to my table, getting me a coke. It was like this is wealth. I it, never in my wildest dreams did I think Indians would have a wedding where the servers are Europeans, not even white people, like Europeans shipped in. Crazy. Somewhere behind me, there's an ancestor of mine who's going, "Yeah, boy, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> I'm like 300 years ago. <laughs> God. Okay, okay, Akash Singh. I wish we could have had an organic conversation. I know. I, know. I think we can get to. Let's do that. But actually, last wedding question. You're you're getting pictures taken by paparazzi now, or what, what's going on? <laughs> what's the deal here? And boy, where the. F- die when this is happening i really you know what i mean a small vein part of me is like i'm not i haven't made it yet if but what was that like for you bro so in our country the paparazzi are a very very key part of culture yeah and i've I and they're be, hilarious yeah they're and they're so fun. funny there's yeah. positive energy exchange. yeah it's so funny um i think the difference is at least this is what i have heard about the uk and the us i feel the paparazzi there isn't as friendly as the paparazzi here yeah so uh Honestly, in India, we look forward to like meeting them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically, when you get out of your car, uh, you gotta be escorted by security into the venue. They do your their checks yeah. on you. They allow you inside, and as you walk forward, the management points you towards an area which is like, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah, okay. uh, kept for the paparazzi. And then you go into you do your thing. Wow. Uh, and this is probably the most important paparazzi event of the year, if not the decade, according to me, wow. man. Because even they were waiting for uh, everyone. To, there's John Cena. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Kim Kardashian's there. That's all the politicians. Crazy. Like the politicians interact with the paparazzi, which yeah. doesn't happen often in our country. Yeah. Uh, so fun. Uh, I, I mean, I've also kind of gotten into clothes and fashion because of my job. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, you kind of have to. It's weird how that happens. Yeah. Because people make a couple negative comments and you're like, well, I got to dress differently now because I don't want to do that, <laughs> that ever again. So, did, yeah. you, did you notice everything that people were wearing? I did. Yeah, I did. Because I felt, well, I noticed my wife, we literally, this is from my wedding. Uh, two of the three outfits are from my own wedding. Same with my wife. I felt like some some of the guys there, I was like, y'all should have stepped your fucking game up, dude. This is the Ambani <laughs> wedding. I'm going to be honest. The girls, everybody came. They came correct. Mm-hmm. Some of the guys, I was like, if you don't take your what, kurta pajama off and come in a proper shirwani, I'm going to have a real problem with this. Uh, this was probably the best dressed event I've seen anywhere in my life. And the beautiful thing about... Indian wedding clothes is that if you get it right, you end up looking like a Game of Thrones character. Yeah. Oh, Indian wedding clothes. I when I go to weddings now, I only want to wear Indian wedding clothes. I don't care what kind of wedding it is. Yeah. I only want to wear shirwanis or whatever. My wife, I want an Alenga or Saudi or whatever if she wants to. Yeah. I don't need to do American suits ever again at a wedding. Yeah. Um, do you remember anyone specifically being really well dressed over the last three days? <sighs> yeah, you. <laughs> Thank me. You. Uh, my wife. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take Actually, you. Alia, but I don't want to talk about other women with my wife, you know what I mean? Because I'm oh, I'm whipped. But uh, <laughs> Alia, but I was like, you killed it. Honestly, like just dress wise, I don't, it's crazy I'm noticing women's fashion, but I thought Alia, what she did, all the women were beautiful, but Alia, like I really like the style choices. And that's, for me to notice that as a guy is kind of crazy, but I was like, oh, the style, my wife said it well. She said she was very clean. The aesthetic was just clean. And I think the Saudi was like hundreds of years old or something from like 1930, something like that. But like mm. just really tasteful, great choices. Not to insult anybody else, but really leapt out to me the stuff I saw from her. For me, it was Priyanka Chopra and oh, ja- yeah. Janvi Kapoor. Uh, these yeah, two yeah. Janvi, yeah, Janvi looked great. Yeah. Nick Jonas looked great. <laughs> I think he always gets his Indian dressing right. Yeah, he does. He does well. He does well for himself. Uh, and that means Priyanka Chopra is getting it right for yeah, him. Yeah. All, all our girlfriends and wives dress yeah, us, bro. Yeah. No, like, I chose my own stuff, oh, to be honest really? with you. Yeah, I don't know I, why. Um, with Indian clothes, I have a more strong sense of what I want than with American clothes. My quick takes about the guys mm. uh, was, I, I loved what Arjun Kapoor wore today. He yeah, yeah, like yeah. Golden dragon yeah. on his uh, Yeah, Sherwani. he looked great. Ranbir also, clean. Yeah. I liked it. He matched her well. Yeah. 
Ranveer Singh on day two wore this like really colorful thing that only he can pull yeah. off, but it looked great on him. I didn't see Saturday because we were late. Friday he had the cut off. Yeah, looked great. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, shout out to Ahan Shetty who wore this like fantastic uh, beige kurta. Yeah, and my boy KL Rahul. Oh, these guys always look great. These yeah. are the people that stuck out to me. Tiger Shroff. Oh, fantastic. Hardik Pandya, I think is the swag of all. There's 1.4 <laughs> billion Indians just in India. He's the number one swaggiest Indian yeah. on earth. Like just cool as. F- I can't explain it. That was that guy is just cool. Even on the cricket uh, pitch, I'm like this guy is cool, and it matched. I was glad it matched up in the wedding. Also, the internet narrative is that the show was stolen by Radhika Mohit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, she, she was she has an aura, dude. Yeah, she really, dude. Honestly, beautiful. Not even just saying that. Like I was like, this girl's really beautiful. Seems really sweet. Again, they seem like I have a genuine love. I was like really. The the best thing about a wedding is the connection, and it was this is the first wedding I've ever been to where I didn't know the people, and I was a little I was like one percent embarrassed about that, but yeah, that's always the best part. And then even not knowing them, I was like, oh, you can feel a connection, and that's so fucking cool. Yeah. I love that. I feel like niceness shows up on the face, brother. Yeah, like yeah. and you could see it with her especially. Yeah, Akash Singh, I'm gonna end this Ambani wedding special podcast by saying. Welcome to India, and I hope you had fun. Oh, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Thanks, Vivan. Young son of a. B- <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Amani family, and thank you to you guys for listening. And we'll be back soon. Akshay, you too, you cutie. <laughs> That was the episode for today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, quick fire episode. Tell me what you thought of this one. Wasn't easy to shoot this one because we had to release it uh, within the first two or three days after the wedding. Everything that I have to say about the wedding, I've already said in the podcast. We've also recorded a solo Hindi podcast, which will be releasing soon. Thank you for listening in. Most memorable experience of my life, perhaps. I've not got any sleep in the last three days. I'm exhausted. I'll see you soon. Thank you for listening in. We also shot an epic episode with Akash after this particular episode. So lots more on uh, overseas Indian culture and. the hindi film industry and bharat geopolitics in the next one lots of love guys i'm going to go to sleep thank you for listening in